Chelsea Griffin, and this is a response to uh, Steve Shive's uh, video summation on the, An Atheist Reads The Case of Christ. Mate, brilliant series, and I salute you for, um, absolutely salute you for struggling through this book. I have read about 100 pages before I stumbled across your playlist. Um, actually, I did look up uh, whether anyone else had done a review on it, because I felt like I was going mad. I can't get past page 100. I, I fall asleep every time I do. It's just, the energy just leaves my body. Um, and quite frankly, like, you hinge on some great logical fallacies that all his arguments rest on. You take these away and everything else falls apart. Um, the idea that the early Christian communities would be self-correcting would embrace historicity over philosophical or spiritual truth. Well, of course, that's not what uh, religious communities are created for, and this was undoubtedly a religious community. So there goes one. Uh, circular logic. I mean, the Bible's authoritative, and these people say the Bible's authoritative, and the Bible says you should trust these people, and the Bible should be believed because these people said you should trust it. So there's two. Um, the idea that no one would die for a lie. Well, if they don't know any better, they can't really help themselves. And if they do know better and they're counting on maybe getting out of the situation that they're in and going to act to a stronger faith community that will do even more for them, the Machiavellian minded sort will absolutely do that. And the people who don't know about it can't do better than that. So there is uh, three right there. And then too soon for a myth, uh, if you write it within so many years or generations of, after someone has died, that is from A.N. Sherwin White's uh study Roman law and Roman society in the New Testament. And of course, uh, that is absolutely not what the man said. Uh, it is quite clearly not. Read it if you don't believe me. The short version goes that he actually criticizes Strabel's previous work uh, when he was writing the paper, and he says, no, you've just got to do your homework and figure out where the historical core of truth is. As in, uh, for example, Jerusalem existed. There were Jews. I know that's a shock to people, however, those things existed. And there are plenty of uh, geologically accurate things that people thought were lost or inaccurate that it turns out were right. Strabel actually gets that right in the book. However, the friend of mine who recommended this to me is an evangelical Christian. They're very rare here in Australia. I can't explain that to my American um, colleagues strongly enough. It is very, 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 very rare to find someone who's a literal believes in Noah's Ark, believes in <clears throat> all the world's animals came from one single boat that was already measured out. Uh, you know, that that um, idea is very, very, very rare here in Australia. It's very rare in a lot of places. It's only America that's really so damn prevalent. And this book, and my disagreeing with him about this book, uh, has basically killed a good friendship I had with a good friend. Um, it's a sad thing, yet it's true. And the reason I've had to do, you can't see it here on this video, however, I've done about an hour, an hour and a half of different takes, just, I've already worn out a single lithium cell battery uh, to try and get this right, and I'm having a damn time doing it. So, yeah, one thing you didn't mention, one thing that Shives didn't mention uh, in the case of Christ is, um, there's this little section he puts at the end of each chapter. Uh, deliberations and for further evidence. Maybe it wasn't in your edition, it was certainly in mine. Um, here, questions for reflection or group study. And this is out of, <clears throat> sorry, this is out of chapter four, corroborating evidence. Is there an incident in your life in which you doubted someone's story until he or she offered some corroborating evidence? How was that experience similar to learning about the kind of corroborative evidence that your mouth she presented. Maybe out it gets worse. Two, what do you consider to be the most persuasive corroboration that your mouth she talked about? Why? Three, ancient sources say that Christians clung to their beliefs rather than disavow them in the face of torture. Why do you think they had such strongly held convictions? It, it, it's the implied wink at the end. Well, there's probably a good reason they had such strong convictions. See what I mean? It's patronizing. I've lost... Uh, I said lost. Yeah, I've, I've kind of lost a really good friend over this. We hung out every couple of months. We talked. We shot the breeze. It was fun. And now I, I have trouble talking to him because 
this comes up when we speak because I don't believe in uh, this kind of Christianity. I don't believe in this kind of spiritualism. I don't believe in this kind of take on the universe where want a medical textbook, read the Bible. Want a uh, science textbook, read the Bible. If I want history of the Israelites, the, Bible, uh, the Talmud and the Torah are beautiful. Great. Do that. You know, if I want, uh, you know, to study the philosophy of the Israelites and the Jewish people uh, about 2,000 years ago, great. Yes, Bible. Beautiful. If I want a literal history of the Roman Empire, it falls really, really short. If I want uh, to study a really solid uh, treatise on medicine or quantum physics, it's not. It, that's not what it was intended for. It was spiritual truth. It's like in the movie Indiana Jones and the uh, Quest and uh, the uh, Quest for the Holy Grail. You know, X doesn't mark the spot. Uh, archaeology is about fact. F-A-C-T, fact. If you want truth, there's a religion class down the hall. I could not have put it better myself, and it is a very, very important lesson for people to learn. And this book fudges the lines. This book says that spiritual truth is more important than fact when it comes to archaeology or history. And the truth is, it's not. If you want history, get a shovel and start digging around a place. Do an excavation or two. You're going to find out some stuff. If you want spiritual truth that enriches your life, by all means, study a philosophy. One of my favorites right now is Lao Tzu's um, The Tao Te Ching. Uh, a good translation of that, written with good balance on the wording, will give you a great insight into human nature and your own experiences. And then it'll say, for further evidence, and then it just says underneath it, more resources in this topic. Um, you know... And it's like Jesus and his uh, Christian origins, uh, sorry, Jesus and Christian origins, you know, uh, outside the New Testament, 1974 by F.F. F. Bruce, uh, Gary Habermas, the historical Jesus, 1996, uh, Josh McDowell and Bill Wilson, he walked among us, 1994. And a lot of the works that would try and cite extra sources outside the Bible um, are reference to other books. And this counts on people not having the time or the money or and just the time alone in the days of the internet to go out and check this sort of stuff out. It's very disingenuous and it's very disheartening. And and I personally think that Christianity, no matter which denomination you're a part of, because I was brought up in the tradition where you got a denomination, needs to do better. You know, and be more honest, because this is dishonest. You know, it's not a it's not a science book, it's a Bible. It's not a maths book it's a bible yeah it's not a you know it might challenge you know philosophy defa rambo you know philosophy of law actually that's what most of i think it's deuteronomy or leviticus i keep forgetting which is doing and it's supposed to challenge you to think past a lot of things you know it, it asks you deliberately bad questions to get you to think for yourself if you don't believe me look up uh Torah scholar, uh, silver, silver red indigo here on YouTube and look at her stuff. So what I'm saying to you here is I've read 100 pages of the case of Christ and I could not continue. I'm taking the bookmark out. I'm going to do it here on camera. There it is. I can't get past it. This book is insulting to my intellect, it is insulting to my understanding of Christians, and it does not gel with any of my Christian friends who appreciate the philosophy of the Bible and get just as much spiritual truth and human insight from reading the Jefferson Bible sans all the miracles. You don't need miracles to live a good life. You just need a life and a conscience. So, yeah, I don't believe in miracles. I don't have any reason to believe in them. When I see the miraculous, I either look for an explanation or I say, or I wonder when someone else is going to come up with an explanation. Until then, it's just interesting. It doesn't validate someone's narrow-minded view of Christianity like Lee Strabell is doing. And Lee Strabell, if you're watching this, you suck, man. Seriously. You're treating everyone like an idiot. You've pretty much killed the good friendship I had. And I hope you're happy. I'm Ozzy Griffin, I am not an atheist, and I hate this book. Have a good one.